What's going on, fam? It's your boy, KP. All praise and credit due to the Most High God and His Son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Man, King Jesus, the greatest one that ever do it. Man, all is well. I'm still getting revelation after revelation. Um, I'll be back on to make some more videos shortly. Just wanted to give you guys an update and let you know phase two of this new world order is coming in and it's coming in fast. Uh, they got y'all good and terrified with this virus in phase one. And now phase two is about to begin. Um, I found one of my old videos I wanted to upload. So when you see it, um, it's about a year old. Um, it got deleted off my last YouTube channel. You know how they're doing right now with anybody speaking the truth. Man, I had a ton of it uh, right after my gang stalking and teachings on every subject that they deleted. But I found one of them. Um, it's about spiritual gifts. So I'm going to splice it in right after this. But um, all you guys, man, I hope you're doing well. Stay prayed up. Um, remember that you're either going to worship a false God or you're going to worship the true living God. And once you figure out that this hand sanitizer and these masks can't heal you, you know, I want you to really think about how powerful is your God. If the hand sanitizer and the mask can do something that your God can't do for you, then you need to reevaluate re your relationship with the Most High. But until next time, fam, you guys stay blessed, stay uh, equipped in the full armor, covered in the blood, filled with the spirit, the name of the son, and the power of the true living God, man. I'm KP, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Till next time. Peace. Man, hello, YouTube. I just had to make a video about this because it is driving me up the wall. I guess apparently nobody but me has been demon possessed. Nobody but me comes from a satanic home where there was full of witches, full of Freemasonry, full of warlocks, and they tried to sacrifice me and they put demons on me. And I saw pretty much every spiritual gift there is but the knockoff version that the devil has before the whole, the most high came and rescued me out the second kingdom and pulled me out of there. So, you know, this talking in tongues, I've been, you know, I go around searching from church to church as I'm looking for a new church home right now, just to see what they believe in, to see if anyone has a true spiritual gift. Cause I've had most of the fake knockoff spiritual gifts that the enemy has, like the devil counterfeits, everything that God has. That's all he can do. He can't create nothing new, but he has a counterfeit version of it in their certain size. But, you know, there's only one Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has gifts and there's a diversity of gifts, you know, so it's, it's, it's laid out clearly, but it's misinterpreted it by the masses. You know, I want to read from, I'm reading right now from first Corinthians. I read King James because you know, first off, the NIB, they wrote that in 1978. I don't know why you need to keep rewriting books that's already written unless you change and stuff in there slowly. And that's the great falling away, which is a whole nother different story. But uh, looking at 1 Corinthians 12 right now, it says, you know, this is verse one. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Um, ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as we were led, you know, so it's pretty much saying, you know, like, don't be a fool when it comes to spiritual gifts. Um, and I, and I speak from the spirit. Like I was an atheist. Like I said, I grew up in a satanic household till I was age 39, went through a bunch of things in life. I started seeking God. I heard the voice of God and that's how I became a believer. He, I never knew or had a relationship with God. I was praying for months. He showed up and I knew it was him. And when you know the voice of God, you you know the voice of God. And I sought after that for years. I wasn't even, I wasn't sold on the Jesus thing because Jesus didn't come talk to me. I didn't see Jesus. So, you know, I'm a hardhead. Until I see it myself, I'm not going to believe it. But, you know, verse three, it says, wherefore I give to you, understand that no man speaketh, but, oh, uh, sorry, no man speaking by the spirit of God called Jesus a curse. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Like, that's exactly what happened to me. Until I came and got rescued out of that hell I was in for two and a half months, seeing full-blown in the spirit and demons were everywhere. People don't believe in demons, neither. 
Guess what? I didn't until January of 2019. I didn't believe in a demon until I seen him. And guess what? I didn't believe him probably the first 10 or 15 times I saw demons. I, I, I believed I was crazy, but I didn't believe in demons. But man, let me get back to this. You know, it talks about like there's a diversity of gifts of the same spirit. And it talks about, you know, um, the different types of gifts there is, you know, to, to, to one, it's the spirit of wisdom to another. It's the knowledge of the same spirit, you know, to another, it's faith to another, it's healing to another is the working of miracles. Another one working of prophecy, another one discerning of spirit that's seen and another diverse kinds of tongues. That means different kinds of tongues. That means different languages. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mean babbling of what you see in the church. You know, there's some key points right here in Corinthians 12. I want to make sure I make sure I hit. Um, you know, it talks about like the members. Where is it? It said in God's when he distributes these gifts, it's like this is verse 28, Corinthians 12. And God has set some in church. First, the apostles. Second, the prophets, thirdly, teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, and lastly, the diversity of tongues. You know, you have to look at the, you have to look at the body of Christ and the, and the dis distribution of spiritual gifts. I don't, I'm not even a sports dude, but look at it like a, a, a football team. You know, you go into a church and you especially the Pentecostal church. That was the last one I went to. Everybody's in there babbling in tongues. So there's only one spiritual gift in the whole church and everybody has the same spiritual gift. That's like going on a football team and everybody's a quarterback. Um, that's not going to be a very diverse body if everybody has the same skill set. The body of Christ and spiritual gifts is about a diversity of gifts that when they come together, they can draw different believers in that edify the body of Christ. That's what it's really about. It isn't about babbling and going on. You know, oh, oh man, this this really drives me, drives me up the wall. But now I'm over to um I'm flipping over to Corinthians chapter 14. And I'm reading about the spiritual gifts. So, you know, verse two says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh unto men or speak of not on to men, but on to God, for no man understand them. How does the spirit speak mysteries? Like if no man understands you, what's the point? The next verse, but he prophesieth, speaketh on to man to edification and exhortation and comfort. Exhortation means above everything. You know what I mean? So to make a long story short, if Speaking in tongues is to convince a non-believer that God is real. So let me give you an example. Say I'm over in Thailand and all these Thai people know I'm an American. They know I don't know Thai. I, I'm trying to order food. I can't say nothing. I get hit with the Holy Spirit and start speaking in some tongues and I give a message that they clearly understand. And when I snap out of it, they're in amazement. And I tell them, that's the Holy Spirit. And God told me, what happened? What did I say? I don't even know what I said, but you tell me what I said. Like, that is the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues is to draw in the unbeliever. The gift of prophecy is to edify the body of Christ. The gift of prophecy is for the people that already believe, if that makes any sense. You know what I mean? You know, there's a couple verses in here, um, you know, verse, verse five, it said, or verse four right here. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesy edifieth the church. That's just what I said. Um, you know, verse five, I would that ye speak with tongues, but rather you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesieth than he speaketh with tongues, except he interpret. 
that the church may receive edifying. So, you know, it, it, it falls back over and over and over again. Like, unless there is an interpreter of the tongue, then you're babbling. You're babbling. Like, people do not believe the devil has counterfeit gifts. I've had most of them. If anybody leaves a comment, I will make a video about my experience of these counterfeit gifts. Because I swear to you, for five years, I knew I was talking to God and these gifts got bigger and they got more elaborate. And I was just like, man, this is crazy. Like seeing vision, seeing prophecy, like the devil can do all of that stuff. He can do most of that stuff. You know what I mean? But, you know, it, it's the thing with... uh. With there's no coincidences like God, God, the way he does it is always new. You know, here's the here's the way a devil will, will communicate with you. You will you will have to see you will have to have a symbol like that's where to get down with them spirit guide symbols. Oh, like what's your symbol or what's your spirit guide symbol? Or are you seeing 11, 11 and 222 and 333 on on the clock? You know, I got another video about this, about the third eye, but that's, but that's how it became aware to me. Like the devil tried to convince me that the big, all right, YouTube, I guess it's going to be part two because something happened to my phone, but you know, back to what I was talking about, but with the, with the symbols and the way the devil communicates, it's always a knockoff, dumbed down version. Like I was mentioning, you know, I would, when I was demon possessed, I'd see the clock at B222. And then I have some associated thought to make a call or to do something and it would always work out. But the way the, the most high does it is you, you will get some coincidence and it'll always be new. It'll be like, um, you'll be talking on the phone with somebody. It'll always, everything will be random. Nothing will be fixed like a clock. So I remember like talking on the phone with somebody while I'm driving. Hey man, what'd you do this weekend? Oh man, went and got some food. I ate at Cheesecake Factory. As I'm passing Cheesecake Factory, as they say it, and then you'll get some vision. You know, that's how God does it because he's in control of everything. He's omnipresent. And, you know, that's that's another good one. The way the way the devil will, will make a knockoff version of being omnipresent. Omnipresent means God's everywhere, can see everything. The devil is was a fallen angel. He's one fallen angel. So the way he makes a knockoff version of being omnipresent is... Everyone that has taken the third eye of Lucifer, third eye of Horus, he can see through their eyes. There's a fallen angel spirit within them and he can see through their eyes. So everyone around the world that has this third eye, you see this Illuminati practice, Freemasonry, Eastern Star, witches, warlocks, Greek letter organizations. It's all the same thing. So he can see through their eyes and that's the way he mimics being everywhere, every time. And I had to find that out the hard way. Like, I, I, I remember going around demon possessed people on purpose just to see if this worked. And when I was in their presence, I knew a fallen angel spirit was seeing me through their eyes because the moment I got in their presence, my phone would start ringing from other people that knew I was being demon possessed. And I'm like, how are they communicating? But that's exactly how they communicate. But man, you know, back to back to this tongues, you know, I've had all of these gifts. I've had a lot of knockoff versions. Pretty much that's how it works. The devil's whole plan is to deter you from God's divine destiny he has for your life. So before you get the authentic gift, you will he will always put the knockoff version of the gift right in front of you to, to, to distract you like a little kid. And, 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 and any type of spiritual gift works. But, you know, that single eye, you think about the, the single eye, the third eye of Lucifer. It's a single eye. And yes, it will give you spiritual sight, but it's very degraded. The spirit, when the light is of darkness, it's very degraded. Like a single eye is like an AM. There's no stereo. So there's no depth perception. There's going to be no depth perception when it comes to your spiritual awareness, you know. What is wrath with no mercy? Does that make sense? So it's going to be one sided because it's only one eye. So you're only looking at you're only looking at things one way. But um, you know, man, I just I just had to get that out because I see these babbling fools on here 
and it makes me sick. And they're like, well, any, any Christian can, can, can learn to speak in tongues. Like, oh, really? Anybody can, like anybody can learn Spanish too. And what that tongue stone sound, stuff sounds like is a bunch of babbling. Because the, the way that I read Corinthians 12 and Corinthians 14 is, is God hands out the diversity of these spiritual gifts to, to whoever he sees fit. And it's like, a, 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 like again, like that football team. He going to make one a quarterback. He going to make one a running back. He going to make one a lineman. And that's how it goes. You don't get to pick which spiritual gifts you get. They just fall on you. And like two, if you really do get to pick, if every if everyone can learn the gift of tongue, like why don't you pick a different spiritual gift that might help somebody? Like why don't you learn the gift of healing, or learn the gift of prophecy, or learn the gift of wisdom, or learn the gift of knowledge? Like. Those will edify the body a whole lot more than a bunch of babbling fools. Because, you know, like, if it's truly driven by the Holy Spirit, you would be able to go to different churches and you'll see the same spirit. But you go to some churches, everybody's falling out babbling. Like, what spirit is that? Man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about this, y'all, but it drives me up the wall with people who have never seen in the spirit and they don't recognize demon possessed people when they see them they don't know how to test spirits I need to make a whole video on testing spirits because you know back to that single eye thing there's no death and the people that are demon possessed, they have the knowledge of God. You got to remember these demons, these fallen angels were in the kingdom of God. So they know the word of God. So people pay homage and, and put demon possessed people on a pedestal, which is a lot of these big uh, mega churches, these 503C organizations. They put these preachers on a pedestal because they can be charismatic, because they can recite scripture. But that is the single eye. So what, you know, one way I've learned to really test the spirits is I tested the spirits by what happened to me. Everything I knew about God and Jesus got revealed to me through experience. That's when scriptures came alive to me. You know what I mean? I can recite and learn any language and repeat it back to you. But it doesn't hit home until there's a revelation. And that's how you know a person is operating in a fallen angel spirit. The fallen angels were never human. So while they're highly intelligent, their intelligence didn't come about through some earthly experience. Therefore, they just have the knowledge. And that's how you have to test the spirit. You have to dig deeper. So when somebody quotes some scripture and it sounds miraculous, Dig a little deeper. Ask them, how was that How was that scripture revealed to them? What life experience did they stumble upon and struggle with to where that scripture was revealed, had a deep meaning in their soul, and an understanding was bestowed upon them? That's what scriptures do. They come alive. They come alive in your soul. But fallen angels don't have souls. They're soulless human beings. Oh, man. Thanks for watching this video, YouTube. I'm, uh, I'll make another video. If you have any comments or any questions about what I mentioned, I'm sure I missed something. But, you know, I speak from my experience. I don't take no notes. I let the Holy Spirit guide me. What I talk about is what I experienced and what I know. It isn't what I read, it's what I experienced. You know what I mean? I went back and read it later and it blew my mind because I'm like, how does this book know me? You know what I mean? I thought I was reading the Bible until the Bible started reading me. That's how you know. But peace, y'all. Till next time. Take it easy.